Impediment refers to basically a pinching of the rotator cuff. And what happens is that muscle can get pinched or you get swelling within that muscle. It leads to pain, irritation when you're reaching overhead. There's also a fluid sac called a bursa that sits just above that muscle and allows that tendon to glide smoothly underneath the bone of the acromion. When that gets inflamed and irritated, it's kind of like a balloon. It will swell up and limit the amount of space available for that rotator cuff and start to cause irritation. Symptoms are fairly consistent with uh, pain reaching overhead, reaching across your body. It gets worse when you try to lift an object out to the side or overhead. It's very common also to have pain at night, especially if you roll over on that shoulder quite uncomfortable and then usually the pain doesn't radiate past the elbow it's localized along the outer side and the upper part of the shoulder can sometimes rotate into the neck or the paraspinal region and down into the elbow diagnosis of impingement is usually based on our clinical exam and our history with the pain reaching overhead the location of the pain worse with motion of the shoulder or lifting there are a couple of tests we can do. There's a few ones called a near impingement where we raise your arm overhead and rotate that hand inward. If that reproduces the symptoms, that's positive for impingement. There's also something called an impingement test where we inject uh, marcaine or lidocaine, a numbing medication, into the space below the, the chromium. And if that helps with your symptoms, that is a positive test and usually signifies that impingement is a source of some of the pain. Impingement typically is treated, especially early symptoms of impingement, with adjusting activity modifications, adjusting the things that, that make it hurt. If it hurts to reach overhead, if it hurts to reach across your body, we try to avoid those activities. Ice and rest are the primary and preliminary forms of treatment. 90% of the time, the physical therapy, injections, and uh, anti-inflammatories will take care of the symptoms with impingement. Occasionally, there will be spurs that develop off the lower side of the acromioclavicular joint, which is a small joint on the top part of the shoulder that runs above the rotator cuff that can lead to persistent symptoms. If the therapy and other activities don't help with the symptoms, we can go in surgically and basically plane off those spurs so that they don't rub on the tendon. At the same time, we'll go in and resect or remove that fluid sac or the bursa that's causing a lot of the symptoms and can help with the pain and the irritation. Also, some of the swelling around the rotator cuff and open up that space so that you don't have the pinching. Surgery for an impingement is almost universally done arthroscopically. Two or three small incisions, we were able to put our, our shaving or our burr device in there that we can plane down the spurs and then do our debris and our bursectomy. If there is a rotator cuff tear, or at least a partial tear of the rotator cuff, sometimes we have to make a small incision to go in and clean out or resect that frayed tendon to allow us to reattach it back to the bone. But usually that surgery can be done all arthroscopic. There is some truth to what your grandmother used to tell you about not shrugging your shoulders or leaning forward by keeping your shoulders back opens up that arch that the rotator cuff muscle tracks through and allows that uh, swelling to diminish. So if you can stabilize those muscles that attach the shoulder blade to the spine, you can actually improve some of your impingement symptoms and prevent it from coming back. Once it improves, it's important to keep the exercises going so that the symptoms don't come back uh, after you're feeling better. After uh, surgical repair, typically takes about two to three months to regain full strength and recover uh, symptoms. It, we do have to focus on physical therapy after surgery as well to, again, rehab for the same reasons we did without surgical intervention, to rehab that rotator cuff, get the, shoulder, the muscles around the shoulder blade and the rotator cuff stronger, uh, and improve range of motion. But usually after about two to three months from surgery, you'll get full recovery and can return to full activities with the shoulder.